So. Yeah. Uh, when do you see electric cars totally taking over? Uh, well, that's a very interesting question. I think actually that electric cars will be um, a consequence of autonomous cars. So, so do I. Uh, yeah. Because if, if you ask normal people right now what they think, how much range they need, they will say 50, 500, 600 uh, miles of range. Yeah, it's because, crazy. Yeah, because yeah. once per yeah. year they go to grandma. You Completely know, they, with you on that. Yeah, yep. so when, I, when I, I think that. And I think the timeline for EV adoption is there for the timeline for level five autonomy. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's just that, oh, great. I feel really good now. Something this guy thinks, I think too. That makes me feel, I feel, I feel good about that. Um, a theme that's come out as well the last couple of days is uh, big, big discussions and, and varying uh, answers to um, solid state batteries. Would you like to say anything about solid state from, from your sense of things in terms of what you've been doing or you're planning to do? Well, I have my, my original notebook like this from, from 10 years ago. Mm where I wrote everything down and in that notebook is, you have the Panasonic 3.4 amp hour 18650 cell uh, which is uh, today is still state of the art in terms of energy density mm -hmm. and I got like a thousand emails from people f that I know and from the industry like have you seen this article about a battery that recharges in five seconds why don't you use this have you seen this <laughs> article about the lithium yep. air battery and whatever yeah um, and I've been hearing the same story for, yeah. for 10 years, not to mention, you know, uh, yeah. like uh, the um, liquid, uh, you know, nano flow cell and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, all of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, magic batteries. Yeah, magic yeah. batteries. So, well, uh, there's lots of stuff in, in laboratories. Uh, what will really, like, and people focus on this one little thing that this battery can do better, like recharge in five yeah. minutes. But what about... Uh, it's it's uh, all of them. It's the five or six or seven or eight things. Yeah. Yeah. Safety, cost, energy density, yep. power density, all yep. of that stuff. Um, so I don't really see anything big happening so soon, like incremental changes, like with the form factor change from 18650 to 21700. Um, so it will, it will take some time. And we, we are betting on the, on the technology of today. Yeah, um, which is 21700 currently. So yeah. the C1, C2 has actually 21700 cells. Um, and that's where we see the money being invested in. And that's yeah. for sure going to be the standard for the next five, six years. Um, beyond that, really difficult to say. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, because another man who makes pretty cars, Mr. Fisker, was here talking about solid state batteries and, and some other people. Yeah. So, so what does so he say? Is it real? Uh, well, it was interesting. He's, he's, if you kind of put a scale of like, you know, right out there, it might not happen at all, or it was seven to 10 years. Uh, Henrik, sort of a, like next Wednesday. No, no, in fairness, he, he, he's sort of 18 months, two years. Okay. I mean, he, he, feel, he, he believes that the point of putting it into, into a vehicle on the road to test and validate, etc. cetera, but... Um, but if it's that timeline, then you have to have the cells already today. I, I completely with yeah. you, but, but so. I think the overall consensus of people far cleverer than, than me, and you know, a lot of in the audience have heard them, it's kind of five to seven years before it's in vehicle applications. And again, I think, going back to your point, five to seven years, that sounds familiar. Five yeah. to seven years, yeah. level five technology, five to seven years. You can almost feel that there's this convergence of things that are in R&D state at the moment, to that point five or seven years hence, where then we can just jump to owned electric autonomous vehicles and just exactly. leapfrog switching from a conventional owned vehicle to an electric owned vehicle. Exactly. Why? You know? Yeah. Um, and you will not care, like you don't care now how many kilowatts your tram has. Exactly. When you're going to a tram or a bus. Like uh, even in Amsterdam, all the buses on the airport are electric. And I, as an expert, I had to really like, is this really an electric car? Like, is this an electric yeah. bus? And I had to like look under the car to under the mm. bus to see if there is an exhaust. Um, and, and I think that the same will happen in 15, yeah. 20 years with drive pods. Uh, people will not yeah. care anymore. And based on the data that Uber and all the others have, yeah, that was good stuff. They will know exactly what kind yeah. of car and so on. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's another one there about uh, um, yeah. C could you make a more affordable um, well, electric and mid-range car? Then we not. Because the supply chain, uh, you know, again, example of Tesla, as far as I know, they have raised 14 billion until today, 30,000 employees, done it, lots of things right. And still, you know, they're just getting out there producing more affordable vehicles in that range. And there are plenty of other people trying to do that. We, we, are, not, we are not that yeah. company. It just takes a massive scale, supply chains and all of that, that we, it's just, yeah. we can't do that. And we are best in making high performance cars. 
<laughs> and we don't want to compete with our customers. It's funny you mentioned Tesla because I, I see um, Marty Rimac as, as Europe's answer to Elon Musk, but with the ability to grow a much better beard than, <laughs> than Elon's ever grown. He only has one sort of under here a bit. So, so that's, that's impressive. Yeah. L listen, I, I truly could talk with Mate for all afternoon, and uh, I hope and I think most of you would, would, would like love to listen to so much more. But we're going to see this story carry on. We're going to see much more announced as uh, that Porsche um, uh, partnership develops and uh, as the product goes down to um, different uh, locations to be shown to more and more people. Um, and I just would like to, again, um, congratulate Marte and the whole team um, in Croatia for getting to this point. I do hope you beat Argentina tonight because I'm English and anyone who beats Argentina is good in our view. <laughs> Only because the, the, the history of the football, nothing else. And um, yeah, oh, that was awkward. Um, but I, I just like to uh, once again uh, congratulate you, Marty, and thank Thanks. you very much for spending time with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.